Entertainment. Welcome, Woozy. Welcome to Metro FM, my brand new radio show. It's called The Front Row, 9 to 12 in the mornings on the biggest urban radio station in South Africa. 6.7 million listeners strong. I'm Pona Mateba, Queen Bee. I'm going to show you the ins and outs of what happens. So welcome to The Front Row. 1036 Metro FM is where you're at. 089-110-3377. Call myself and JJ. We're in studio. Let us know what has got you upset and we'll dedicate a song to you that best describes the situation you are in. Do you remember how and when and why you got into radio? It was actually by accident. I was hanging out at YFM. Yeah. And then uh, Lee just said, JJ, you want to do the hip hop news? Like, and that okay, was it. That is it. You know, I also started YFM. How it worked, I remember I was working at Live on SABC One. Yeah. And DJ Monda was one of the guests that I was interviewing. And he says, the late DJ Mond is like, yeah. you've got a great voice, yes, this. you should try radio. I'm like, oh, thank okay. you. Yeah. How do you do it? And then he actually said, come to Rosebank on Saturday. Mm. I'll show you how to put a demo together. Put a demo together. And the, they hated it at YFM. They're like, sorry, maybe try next year. And then I tried again next year and I made my demo harder. And I guess the rest is history. I knocked on Metro FM's door for four years. She's every year. I knock on every door. Live, yeah. I did it for four years. YFM, two years. Metro FM, two years. Top billing, three years. So I think people have this misconception that it's always easy. You get it because you have a great voice or you're Bonang from yeah. Top Billing. And the funny thing is, I mean, the year I actually started, I was like, you know what, Metro's not going to happen. That's the year they called me. They're like, yo. It's happening. Are you available this afternoon? I'm like, yeah. This is Karen, the program's manager. I'm like, okay, what up, Karen? She's like, yeah, listen, I need to see you this afternoon. Yeah. When they're like, yo, do you want to do the breakfast show? I'm like, okay, I'm in. Just, Karen and, as that's, well. and that's the year I gave up. I was like, you know what, just say I'm not going to apply. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. Like, you know when you're always on the brink? Yeah. It's like that's when you shouldn't give up because and that's it when it usually happens. Also, Karen was like, hi, Panang, please can I see you? We mm. went to like a restaurant, spoke. She was station manager for Metro yeah. Fame. She's like, you know, how's your, how's your schedule? Do you think you can do a mid-morning show? I'm like, well, I want it so I, I can definitely squeeze and move things. So... But when they told me you're my producer, oh, uh, I was like, oh, uh, help me. I'm being surrounded <laughs> by men and naughty men. <laughs> I don't. You know the difference between Metro and Y? Obviously, it's very, it's very simple. Regional versus... National. National. Yeah. Uh, Metro FM is a beast. 6.7 million listeners. Yeah. And you speak to so many people at a time yeah. from all over the country. Like, it's, it's a great brand and yeah. everything. I mean, like, when you hear, everything just works. You know? And also, it's um, it's a different style of delivery as well. Yeah. But I'm glad I started at YFM because I feel like at YFM you get given the chance and opportunity to polish. Your skills. To tweak. Yeah. To make sure things are correct, to make sure things are right. You yeah. know what I mean? And by the time you get to this platform, yeah. it's actually cool. You know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what you know. You know all about radio. Yeah. Actually, you have well, you don't know everything, but you know you have a you're basic prepared. understanding and you're prepared. And for me, it was a shock when I mean you're on radio and on, on YFM you expect somebody from Kempton Park to call in. Always. Yeah. So it's all, now if somebody in Limpopo, Nelspring, Cape Town, like yeah. Kimberley That's calling massive. you. I have people from Dublin who listen to the show, so. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's a and beast. Really it's dope. a monster. Like Ishmael Ibra Ibrahim calls it, the mighty, the mighty metro. You know, I think for me, my transition when I was leaving live, uh, when I was leaving Metro FM and coming, well, why for Metro FM is similar to when I was leaving live and top billing. Two very mm. different audiences. Not very different, but just um, there's a certain delivery that has to come into play. Mm. Um, and but other... it's a mind, it's a preparation of the mind more than yeah. it is anything. Understanding your audience, knowing what LSM they are, how to talk to them, what kind of music they're listening to. I always say this when I teach um, my kids at the TV presenting course that I have in Randburg, that as soon as you understand who you're talking to, you know how to speak to them. Yeah, yeah. makes things easier. So easy. And then you complicate it and overthink it and it's simple. Keep it simple, stupid. It's the art of marketing, you know? Mm. As the minute you understand who you're talking to, you know exactly how to speak yeah. to them. So I think for me, that's been the only difference, preparing for Metro, understanding the brand, understanding the gratitude, understanding what it is they're trying to achieve, what Metro FM stands for and who the Metro FM listener is. After that, it's just like, have fun with it. It's a personality journey. It feels like we've been doing this thing forever. God, yeah. This show, specifically. And we're only in May. <laughs> it's, only, it's only been a month, eh? Let me tell you, my listeners, my, my viewers, they follow me wherever I go. When I left yeah. 
live. I took all of them to Top Billing. <laughs> when I left YFM, I brought all of them here and I yeah. took them to Clash of the Choirs on Amazanti Magic. And um, I take them everywhere I go. I've got the, the most amazing supporters. It's actually quite mm. overwhelming sometimes, the, the level of love that I get. But, you know. It's a it's, good and thing. I have a, a, a wide, you know, uh, variety of people that listen and watch and follow me. So it's always fascinating when you're in Durban to know that all the Indians know you because you watch, because they watch Top Billing. How will go Kasi? They know you because they listen to Metro. Yeah. In church, they know you, the, the Gogos, because they watch Clash of the Choirs. It's such a great feeling. What other radio station have you wanted to work for? Um, it's always been Metro, hey? After Y, it's always, actually, it's always been Metro, even when I said Y. Yeah, when, when I left mm. Y, it was either Metro mm. or Mutsuiding FM, because Kiba Swan. Yeah. And I was a, an entertainment correspondent from, on Mutsuiding FM for yeah. a year. So um, I don't think my Tuana is strong enough to yeah. be on Mutsuiding FM, but if it wasn't Metro. But for entertainment, it works. I mean, for like a young show, because they don't mm. expect you mm. to be. Mm. You know, speak like because they think all of us proper. just speak English and we're like from the north. Yeah, but so I know, I say, 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 yeah. is make more moves and less announcements. You yeah. must announce on the day something is happening, like my radio show. Yeah. I put it on Instagram the morning of. People are like, girl, please, it's the 1st of April, stop pulling our leg. And then the next morning I come back, they're like, how? So you went lying. I'm like, yes, make more moves and less announcements. So I don't say anything anymore until you until see, it's done. Until it's you see a press sealed. release. Yeah. <laughs> until the contract has been signed. I try. It's easier like that because then you don't jinx it. Yeah.